Yes, they can. Okay. Well, hello, Maniacs. Hey, Maniacs. First of all, can you hear us and can you see us? We want to make sure that that's all available. I know you're about 20 seconds behind us, so just uh, let us know. said it was a little spooky that we were whispering into our minds. Yes. <laughs> hit good. that record button. Yes, the record yes. button has already <laughs> been hit. Just confirming, yes, we're actually recording now, so that's Yay. all covered, covered, covered. Oh my gosh, guys, it's the last episode of Midsummer. Oh my god, 132 episodes. I didn't think it? we were going to last 10. <laughs> I just can't believe it that we've run out of episodes. There's, It always felt like there were an infinite number of Midsummers. I, I thought for sure that we would get almost caught up and they would have another season and then this pandemic thing happened and I was like down yeah uh I bet you if there wasn't a pandemic we'd have five six more episodes now probably but we'll get them yeah and when we do we'll cover them it's definitely not the last definitely not the last but uh it'll it'll be switching and so just to go over today very quickly from from three to uh, from two to three, we're going to cover episode one thirty two, the witches of angels rise. Right, and then at three o'clock, you're going to get all sorts of goodies. You're going to premiere. Get, they're going to get the premiere of the trailer. You're going to get not only the premiere of the trailer. You're going to get what shows we're going to cover for the next three months. Yeah, you're going to get the oh. scoop. So three or four months. If you haven't seen The Witches of Angels Rise, if it hasn't aired where you live, uh, you might want to tune out and come back in an hour, um, so that we don't ruin it for you because we're yeah. going to spoil it. We don't want to ruin which it, which is why we've got spoiler alert, spoiler yes. warning yes. on the screen. <laughs> um, and so uh, we're we're just going to cover the first hour like we would a normal episode, and then. Yep. Uh, bounce into the the switch over and we'll talk a little bit about the switch over and all sorts of things that are going to happen because of it and some ideas that we have to provide even more content for you guys so fun absolutely stuff. fun stuff not as fun as seeing all these people in the chat oh, you guys are so great yes absolutely oh and at three o'clock i'll go grab olive yes <laughs> So Olive will make an appearance at 3 o'clock. Everybody wants to see Olive. <laughs> She'll be like, why am I here? What am that I doing? That dog is more popular than I am. But wow, she's not as... She's she's the screensaver at the vet's office now. Yes. That's she's how popular a she is. a celebrity at the vet's office. All right. Do we okay. have anything at the top? Okay, got a couple of things off the top. First of all, uh, I did want to note that, uh, first of all, this is Mystery... Ma- uh, well, Sorry. Yeah. This is Midsummer, Midsummer Maniacs, a comedy recap podcast dedicated to the ITV series Midsummer Murders. Each week, we dig into an episode of the show, including the murders, the mayhem, the loonies, and everything else we love. I'm Mark Bell. I, I'm Sarah Smith Robbins. And I just want to say right off the top, when we switch to Mystery Maniacs, you will lose nothing and gain more. Yeah. That's like, we're not going to get rid of anything. We're just going to add stuff. Yep. So... Uh, just again, spoiler warning, this is not aired in the UK and I don't think it's aired in Australia yet. I'm not I'm 100% not sure. sure. Anymore. It's so confusing so, to figure um, that out. You might not have it. And if you let your kids go to psychic fairs, then they should be able to <laughs> handle this. Episode. Have you actually been to a psychic fair? Yes, I have. How, how did it go? 
Um, so my uncle took me. Did to they one. know you were coming? They should have. <laughs> <laughs> but you're getting confused yeah. about people who can see the future versus people who can just read your aura versus yes. people who can talk to the dead. It's There's all con- very confusing. All very confusing. Um, it was super fun. I had my palm read. Nice. Um, and of course, it was all good stuff. Oh yes. Fan- I was gonna. I think I was thirteen. Okay. I was going to have a really fantastic life, which Good. I do. There you go. So they were right. What yeah. do you know? What do you know? Um, I also had my numerology done, all of which I remember is that my lucky number is nine. Nine. Okay. That's all I got from that. Okay. But uh, but it was interesting. Have you ever been to one? No. Oh, no. you're missing out. It's so much fun. It's not my bag, baby. You don't have to buy into it for it to be fun. I know, but it's not my bag. Uh, a couple of sad things. Uh, Bernard Cribbins and David Warner passed yeah. this week. Yeah. So both uh, appearing in Midsummer episodes. Bernard Cribbins, you probably know better as Donna uh, Tate's dad in uh, Doctor, Doctor Who. Doctor Who, yeah. And David Warner as the ultimate evil yeah. in, in, in Time, Time Bandits, Bandits and Lasers, 8 a.m. Yes, he's also in uh, Tron that I watched this week again, which is so, so fantastic. But when good. you talk about a show like Midsummer, you're bound to lose actors because they yeah. have so many in yes. the cast. But also, they tend to kind of, well, they used to anyway, attract kind of older, well-known uh, actors you yes. know, that are familiar to people. Definitely. So it's going to happen. So, Winches of Angels Rise, when did it air? How many views did it have? It uh, has not aired in the UK yet. Uh, May to June 2021 is when it was recorded. Uh, it was directed by Gil Wilkinson and uh, written by Maria Ward. Now, this takes place in... Angels Rise slash Little Worthy. Yes, they're kind of together in this episode. Little Worthy is by far one of the deadliest villages in midsummer they're they're like oh well i'm not sure if lil worthy's all that busy and i'm like no it's in like five episodes isn't it uh more than five i'm just gonna hold up <laughs> these two sheets of paper this is the kind of nerds we are this is a list of all of the episodes that have little worthy in them so if you've uh if you've ever visited little worthy you could be stabbed with a bodkin stabbed with a trident Hit with a hammer, strangled in a bathtub, strangled, dismembered, sledgehammered, poisoned, bear trapped and shot, poisoned and drowned, shot, 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 drug drowned and hanged. I mean, there's there's a lot of options there, you know, in Little Worthy. They really should have a true crime um, festival in, in Midsummer. Well, then they'd have to have some podcasters on, like us. Why are we not on here? I just, I just can't imagine like anybody would show up like, well, half the people who would have come are dead. So <laughs> it's just not as popular as it used to be. It's not, as, it's not a thing. You know, they would have a panel of, of killers who have been paroled from Midsummer. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be really fun. <laughs> I was a killer in a Midsummer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They should do it. They should do it. Absolutely. So we had a, a, a spoiler free mini episode for this one. Um, when it first came out on Acorn, um, which you should have listened to before you watched it. And we, we ask you to, to look for some stuff to watch like a maniac. Um, and, and, those things- and just so you know, uh, the mini episodes will continue yeah. for the new episodes. For new episodes, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So in that one, we asked you to look for a guy who sneaks into the psychic fair without a ticket. Yes. Um, we asked you f- to look for the, psych- the psychic sketch artist, which is not easy to say. No, it's not. Um, and see her awesome drawings. They're and not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome in their own way. We'll show you pictures. Yep. Um, and we also asked you to look at the books in the episode because there's a lot of books. There's a ton of And some of, of them books. are a bit wacky. Yep. Um, and pamphlets. Lots of pamphlets and yes. posters, too. Yep. Boy, Mark loves anything in print in <laughs> Midsummer. You know he studied it. And we think this is the first reference to podcasting. I think Vlogging so. is in the in the fishing episode, but this is the first uh, evidence of of pod, podcasting. Certainly, spells and podcasting. I love it when Winter comes over to their house and they put the the whammy on them to listen to the podcast. Sally Ann and Rachel like subscribe, ring the bell. They may as well, you know, be <laughs> trying to get him to sign up for BetterHelp or buy a mattress or something. By the way. I'm, I'm just going to say this right now. 
There is this, a YouTuber that has 100 million subscribers, and we need 200 to get to 1,000. <laughs> Can we not borrow 200 from that guy? <laughs> and he probably just sits and plays video games while people watch or something, right? And like 65% <laughs> of the people who listen to the podcast on YouTube don't subscribe. How many subscribers do you think these two ladies have? Oh, I think they're pretty popular. With their uh, Healing Matters podcast. Which to me sounds like a medical podcast, not a, a witchy-woo podcast. holistic. Yeah. Podcast. There's a lot of witchy-woo podcasts, and that's great. That's you know, great. I think that podcasting's a fantastic uh, situation. We're an example of it where you can find a community where you didn't think there was community. And it doesn't have to be huge to be successful. No, it doesn't have to be huge to be successful, but we love you all, every last one of you. Kimberly is asking if any of those books are real. Some of them are. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you. None of the pamphlets are real. Well, Though no, because Sarah's made them all. Yeah, Sarah made them all. She has the Hades Caves yes. brochure. Yeah, she has a Hades Caves brochure. She has a brochure for... Night of the Stag Revisited. Yes. What is in that? I don't know. That... That is one of the scariest episodes. Really, the, what's me. in that pamphlet is everybody talking about how that episode creeps them out. <laughs> it's it's reimagining the night of the stag as not um, so rapey. Not so maybe. rapey. Maybe not, not so, so rapey. incesty. Maybe. Rapey. Yeah, 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 that'd be good. And then less rapey. <laughs> the real history of the dark rider. Yep. Which is the headless horseman, right? Little Worthy, the little village with a big history. Oh, it's got a big yeah, history. Yeah, it definitely has Just a big a history. Just a murder. Yep. Like, there's been like 30 murders in that village. And then there's one that's really huff, tough to see. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? It's something or other, the ghost of Costin Abbey. It's the truth behind the ghost oh. of Costin Abbey. There's no brochure about the wolf hunter. There's no brochure about the wolf hunter. And that's or in Little Worthy. Father Brown's butt. <laughs> Uh, the brochure about the, the mooning at the campgrounds. Yes. <laughs> moon over Little Worthy. Yes, Moon over Little Worthy. That's Lordy. what that episode should have been entitled. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this psychic fair going on at the home of the St. Stevens's, right? Yep. And that's Peter and Jeannie and their son, Isaac, who is simultaneously a huffy teenager ugh, and simultaneously a justifiably upset person. Okay, he has like experienced he has every trauma. right to be grumpy. He has experienced trauma and they always talk about how he doesn't do anything and then he spends the rest of the episode doing things. <laughs> oh yeah. He's he's checking his list and breaking into houses for Hattie. Um Hattie's played by Janine Davitsky who I love. I don't know if you'll remember. I think the first time I ever saw Janine Davitsky was on a documentary for the BBC where they um, they selected a family. So it was her and her husband and their two children. And they did like a study of them in their house and talked about like all the chemicals that are in your house and like um, oh, I remember how that. a family I, lives. Yeah, and, yeah, I think I remember that. And um, she made a big deal in the interview with her when they were kind of introducing the family about how she was so ugly. She said, I'm a really ugly woman and I've made a career out of being not attractive and I'm a character actor. And so I get these roles that are like called like, ugly lady or old hag or whatever. And she's like, I don't care. I'm getting well paid and I've got tons of acting credit. She's not ugly. I, no, I don't think she is I either. I don't think she is either. But she's definitely owned it. Yes. You know? Yep. Like She's like, I'm not beautiful and I don't care. I own it. And I love that about Absolutely. her. Absolutely. And she's so cute in this one. Yeah, she's so, she's very earnest and cute and comes out when she needs to come out. You know who else is super cute? Who's super cute? Fleur. Fleur is super... Is, is Fleur below everybody else in this episode? She seems really short to everybody. She is short. I know she is short, but she seems super short to people. The reason why I'm saying she's so cute is this is the first time we see her running. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's, got, she's got a 
got little bow legs. She's got and little she's, bow legs and little little feetsy. And, and she's hustling. Yep. It doesn't help that when I uh, watch the episode the last time, I usually watch it at like one and a half speed. Because I'm just looking for certain <laughs> things. So she was uh, in that yellow shirt. She's like <laughs> up that hill going to the cave. She's so cute. It needs some yakety sex. It does. To, to, uh, yeah. So then we've got the feng shui guy. We've got the tarot card guy. We've got um, Holly Willoughby there, who we talked about in the mini episode. She's playing herself. The table that sells mushrooms. Yeah. I think they're little ceramic mushrooms, I, maybe. Yeah. But they're in a box that looks like real mushrooms, supposedly. There's some weird stuff. Yeah. Like, do you do you think that they is that all is set dressing? Or do you think they invited people who have that kind of business to come and oh, set I up a booth? I think every single little part of it was set dressing. Do you did you see the sign that says don't insult the witches? Yes. <laughs> What is that for? Well, to make sure that you don't insult the witches. Is it a threat? Or is it like a warning? Yeah. Like, don't insult the witches. <laughs> or is it just kind of be nice? Yeah. It's probably be nice. That's the last place you're going to want to insult witches. You're probably surrounded by them. Yeah. Yes. Why is there a cameo in this episode? Why is Holly Willoughby in it? Yes. To flirt with winter. Why? I don't know. I do like to sit in the fancy chair. The, wow, that's a fancy chair. The actor's wife was in an episode yeah. just recently. Nick Hendricks's actual wife. And so why why is she there? I don't know. I don't, Maybe uh, somebody owed her a favor or she's a big fan. I couldn't find any interviews with her talking about being in Midsummer. Yeah, and in the in the mini I talked about how they must exist in the same universe as Ted, Ted Lasso. Lasso. That's right. So, yeah. Well, we've just uh just checked in the chat. Um, Fleur is five one. Five one. So she, she she is we. She is we, but she's adorable. She is so adorable. We also find out pretty early in this episode that Winter's grandfather, Grandpa Jimmy, has died. Yes, and I think that's only there because the psychic fair and a recent death, and it's something that they can kind of tap into to kind of make it seem more authentic. Yeah. Like I love when Hattie meets winter for the first time, she's like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the first murder. Let's talk about Tilly. Okay. So Tilly is killed at the angels rise tower. Yeah. Which looks like a ruin of a cathedral or a keep or something like that. And she's smothered with a mask. Do you know how that works? Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've had masks on that felt like they were going to smother me, but I, I would think you would have to like put a rag in a mask or something and then like, press it really hard against somebody's face. I would think. But she's also stabbed. Yes. With... She she, a pellucid dagger. Yes. So we're going to put a picture on the screen right now of her stabbed with the dagger. Okay. So it's up on the screen now. This dagger is something special. Now, right before the <laughs> pandemic, Sarah and I went to uh, the Wisconsin Dells. Oh, yes. That's right. <laughs> and in the Wisconsin Dells, we were, it, it was empty, first of all, which was weird. Yeah, because no, everybody was like bracing for the pandemic, but nobody knew that. Yeah, we were we were there for a conference. Yeah, and so uh, for fun, we went to this thing that was like, uh, it was like a scavenger hunt in this, inside of a building, and it was all like wizardy themed, and so you had to you had to buy a wand, and when you solved a puzzle, you had to like find the thing and like wave your wand at it and it would rack up points for you on a big screen. And so we both had these wands and we're running around <laughs> going up and down stairs and like we had to wave them at little fake trees. Yep, and all sorts, all and sorts all of, kinds of And it was, it was fun. It was an afternoon of but, enjoyment. But, but this but dagger looks just like looks one of the wands. That just we like it. <laughs> Somebody in the chat says it's plastic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's way plastic. And as a matter of fact, my next door neighbor, when I was a kid, was super into He-Man. He loved He-Man. And he had this He-Man toy. 
they had the Skeletor thing in it, and it had it must have had like a magnet in it. Yeah. And if you waved a wand at it, like the drawbridge came down, and the and the lights in the skull gate came so that's, on. So that's Castle Grey Skull that you're talking. It about. looks just like that. <laughs> It looked yeah. she was stabbed yeah. with the He-Man wand. Stabbed with the He-Man wand. Poor wand. Tilly, stabbed with the He-Man wand. And I love that they have the pictures of all of the like sigils that are around. And they're yeah. showing them to all these experts. Yes. Who should be able to say, oh, that is the symbol of blah. Or that is the symbol oh, of blah. Oh, absolutely. But everybody they show it to goes, oh, those are magic sigils. Yeah, we don't know what they like, are, though. More detail. At least they're magic. At least the scientist is like, "Oh, that's from this." And he's, he's got books. this guy. He's got the books. <laughs> he looks it up. <laughs> yeah. So, so B dies at this tower. What is it? Ten years ago? How long yeah. has it been? It's like nine years. Nine ago. years ago, and she falls. Yeah. So that's an accident. But we don't right? know why she falls, or if it's suicide or anything. I, mean, I think it's an accident. I think, I think she's a- just where she shouldn't be. Yeah, I, I I doubt they advocate people climbing up into that tower and standing no. in that derelict no, I don't stone so. window. Yeah, so she the ivy that she's holding on to gives it kind of sounds like, and she falls right, ah. and so she dies, <laughs> splat. Um, and that kind of sets up the story for the whole episode. Yeah. So now Tilly has been murdered in the same spot, but she's been suffocated mm-hmm. and stabbed with a He-Man wand. Yes, right. Stabbed with a He-Man wand. Yes. Um, but she used to work for B's parents. Yes. Peter and Jeannie, but they had to let her go. Had to let her go. Because she was unreliable. And we'll, we'll cover this probably right before the end, but the motive for killing her is really... She kept annoying me. She, yeah. The, she made me sad. The, so I killed her. The killer what? is is kind of like... I'm upset by this, so I'm going to start killing people. If anybody mentions it, I'm going to kill them. Yeah. That's how you handle grief, you know. Yeah. You just knock off anybody who reminds you of the dead person, and then you're all better. It's all better. Oh, boy. The world would be a different place if we did that, right? Yes. Simeon Dagley, the tarot card reader. So Simeon, I I love his name, first of all. And then I love that he is... Tarot reader slash accountant. He says, accountant by day, tarot reader by destiny. <laughs> so I am university professor by day, podcaster by destiny. I, I guess. Or Halloween fanatic by destiny. It still weird, feels weird when we tell people we're podcasters. Yeah. Because we're like, we have a podcast, you know, and people Well, are you like, do, and I go, yeah. we have a podcast. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to be one of those people. I'm not, like, saying you have to listen to it or anything. But if you like that show, you might you might want to listen. But, if, I mean, if you don't, it's, it's, it's okay. It's like, you know, to forget I mentioned it. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to be Sally Ann and Rachel going, no. you know, we have a podcast. Well, they do the, the whammo on them. Yeah. Do the spell, so. I want a show with them investigating crime. <laughs> I like Hattie better. Oh. So he has a Thoth deck. Yes. Which is the evil Aleister Crowley deck. Yes. And a Levi or Levy tarot deck. Yep. There's tarot decks for everything. Did you know there's a Buffy the Vampire Slayer tarot deck? I was aware of that. I Did I, you know there's a Star Trek tarot deck? Of course there is. That that doesn't no. mesh. <laughs> well for me. When I <laughs> like Star Trek, super science not supernatural at all when i was in uni i had a postmodern tarot deck oh okay <laughs> i didn't understand half the did cards. you whip it out at parties to impress girls of course i did before or after the guitar of course i did <laughs> did it have like descartes or oh i had there, on was, it or there was a derrida card i know a that Borges so, card wow. wow we're way in the weeds <laughs> now this is how nerdy we are, if you didn't already know. Then there's Ginger, the ginger knitting librarian. Why is her name Ginger? Because she's Ginger. Her mom has no creativity. I love how she gets so angry oh, at the end. yeah, she does. Because knowing Midsummer, when you first see her, she's mousy and she's quiet, so she's probably the killer, right? Or she's going to make uh, food and put it in the backyard. Yeah. I spent... Every scene with Ginger 
trying to decide if the actress really knew how to knit because that's what I always do when I see somebody knitting. I yeah. have to watch their hands and I always watch Miss Marple going, is she actually knitting? Did she learn how to knit? Yeah, the the older Miss Marple, the very first one uh, on BBC, that lady did not know how oh, to no. knit. Oh no, she held knitting needles and she went clack, 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 clack. <laughs> she just hit them against each other. Um, I don't think Ginger knows how to knit. Oh, you she's, don't? She's holding it right, but she's not really doing anything. She, Plus, she always book, has an excuse to just set it down. Bookmobile so. is a Cully's job. That's right. But this is a different kind of bookmobile than... It's a different bookmobile. It's the little worthy bookmobile. Um, and oh, the psychic sketch artist. Can you put the image of the psychic sketch yes, artist up Yes, I for can us? put up this. So we can fully appreciate the, the artistry picture of the, of the psychic, psychic sketch, sketch artist. artist. Because, wow. We talked on the mini about how you can actually like pay somebody to draw a picture of your, your future the love of your life, and they're always super attractive people. Yes. That is not the case with the psychic sketch no, artist. No, the psychic sketch artist needs um, some help. They look like victims. Yeah, like... More than loved ones. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Well, one of them, the one that has the lights around it, does not look human. Yeah, the one furthest to the right, like right behind um, Rachel's back, yes. it looks like a goblin. Yes. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm 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 getting your your grandmother. Uh, was she um, Gollum? <laughs> a goblin? <laughs> and then the other ones they they look like sketch artists from a police station more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Before pictures before pictures from a drawing class. You're right. Um, wow, they're bad. They're and with really that bad. with that really good painting in the background, like it's <laughs> it's almost like that painting should be like. It, it's kind of cruel comparison, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> good art, bad art. Good art, bad art. Oh boy, yeah. So then there's the feng shui guy, who is an interior designer, I guess. I guess. And he's complaining about being near the door because the chi will, you know, you know it's air and water. Do you actually think he's flirting with Sarah? Or is he just trying to drum up business and being nice to people? I think he's trying to drum up pe business and be nice to people. I don't think Sarah's his type. Having been to conventions and gone to conventions, you you have to assume that people are just trying to chat you up to sell you something. Yeah. Which is okay. That's why they're there. That's why they're there. Except Sarah. Yeah. Who's just there to show off the history. The uh, creepy history. And bring her dog. Poor Patty. Why does Patty come? He's not feeling well, Mark. You can't leave him at home. And where is Betty? She's away <laughs> with her modeling career in the Hurricane big city. Hurricane Betty. That's yeah. what Sarah calls yeah. her. Hurricane. She's away for something for school. Yeah. She's away for something for school. Uh, college. So one of the things that Sarah is there to talk about is the Hellfire, not the Hellfire Club, the spirit of the damned club. Yes. Right? Which happens in these caves, the Hades caves. Yes. And I don't remember. Did we mention this on the mini? I don't know. You said we, we found them. Yeah, because the the way she talks about it, it is a direct callback to the Hellfire Club, which was a real thing. Started by Sir Francis Dashwood, the Earl of Sandwich. Yes. And they got up to naughty things. Well... In a cave and in a folly. If you're in a group called the Hellfire Club, I think naughtiness is allowed. You're not cross-stitching. No. No. You can do naughty things or play Metallica on your guitar. <laughs> Either one. There was a lot of drinking? I would think there would be drinking. There was a lot of pretending to be a cult people? Yes. Um, and I think there were a lot of mostly naked ladies involved. Yes. That's what the Hellfire Club did. Yeah. They were... Mm -hmm. Richie guys getting away with stuff that they wouldn't oh, normally be able to do. With naked ladies. With some naked ladies. Yeah, I think so. What did you think of Gerard's house? Okay. He's making mint. Yeah. Because that, again, is a multi-million dollar house. Is it a mill? I think it's a mill because it has that big open area in the middle. There's... There's a big cog. Yeah, there's a big cog. In the, like the stairway area. Yeah. And it's on a stream. 
he gets creepy so fast. Yeah. Like the the rat appears on his car, right? Mm-hmm. And then and you're kind of like, oh, he's he's oh full somebody's of, persecuting him. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. He's full of himself, but and then uh, you find out. Then, no, he really then he's deserves. really super creepy. Yeah. And I don't know why he's trying to victimize Jeannie because she doesn't have a lot of money. Peter says they have to host the psychic fair because they're broke, basically. They're like land rich, money poor, gentry kind of people. I would postulate that he wants to seduce her and place her in his rapture because it's a challenge because she's so gaudy gaudy yeah. that he sees it as a challenge to convince her of her past lives in pompeii well everybody was cleopatra apparently. yes <laughs> did you see his no one says in my past life i was a peasant i was a serf and i was beaten every day yes and i I'm, died i have a much better life now the end <laughs> did you see his owl no does he have an owl um, he has a giant owl. A giant owl. When they're outside, they look at the little creek. Yeah. Or we say crick here in Indiana. They look at the creek where the 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 newt lives. Yes. Um, and then they walk uh across the yard and over a little bridge, and he's ahead of them and he kind of pauses and turns turns back and talks to Barnaby and Winter. Yes. And next to them is a, a red owl sculpture that's five feet tall wow it's that's, humongous that's a big owl it's massive and it's just a big old red owl is it metal or is it wood can't tell mm. it's sitting on a stump so it, it might be wood if it's wood the beaver might be able to get it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> the beaver, i gotta say the beaver which is just a rattling growl in a crate because <laughs> that's the sound okay. beavers make first <laughs> of all <laughs> beavers don't make that sound <laughs> And they're generally really quiet and and like they have a a a nature of not being super feral. Yeah. Right. If you corner a beaver, it's right. going to be gonna defend itself. It's yeah. going to be upset. But any beavers I've ever seen have been. They're busy doing. They're their thing. busy doing their thing. And could you really keep a beaver in a wood box? <laughs> Just don't think so. Just go. It'd be out in no time, right? Yeah, you would think. <laughs> I got to get some meat, me some maple syrup. Yeah. I got to get out of here, eh? I mean, you put it in a metal cage or something. Where's the hockey game? If you put it in a wood box, it's like, this is no problem. I'm out. <laughs> it's it's so weird. It's like it's a, it's in two scenes, yes. and I feel it's completely added on. Yes. They're like, we don't have enough weird stuff in this episode. Yeah. I know the answer. Beavers. Beavers in a box. <laughs> and when it's just one. What is one beaver going to do to help anybody? No, certainly not procreate. <laughs> and if it builds a dam in that stream, it might save Sally Ann and Rachel from flooding, but it's just going to flood everybody it's gonna else. It's going to flood somebody else. <laughs> and plus, wild animals are notoriously difficult to get to do what you want them to do. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just drop a beaver in water and they immediately start building a dam. Where would you like the dam, ma'am? Here, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I have my maple syrup now? The great crested newts yes. need to be saved. Yes, the newts need to be saved. So Peter is um, a physicist? Yes. He was investigating string theory. Well, he was reporting string theory. Right. He was fake researching string theory. Which is theory. one of those theoretical physicist kind of things. Which is important. Yes. It's important to have theoretical physicists. But it's but handy if you want to say something very advanced that most people won't understand. And you're usually 75 years behind any actual experimentation proof of what you're saying. Yes. So you could be like, there are strings that connect everything. Oh, they've just started actually reintroducing beavers to Britain according to Nocturnal Druid. Awesome. I hope they're smart enough to put them down in pairs at least. And not in wooden boxes. Not in wooden boxes. <laughs> No, there was an operation. I think it was in Canada to rehome a bunch of beavers, and they dropped them with parachutes. Yeah, out of a plane. they did drop them with parachutes out of a plane, and all those beavers survived. Oh and, yeah, it was yeah, successful. It was super good. Yeah, yeah. So I, Jonas is his research assistant. Yes. Okay. Now I and would ass- the killer. I would assume 
if you're studying something like string theory, that's pretty advanced stuff. You're going to need some advanced degrees, even to be a research assistant. You're but, going to be you have to be working on your PhD at the very least. But Jonas just graduates from college and moves home and starts helping Peter with string theory. Yeah, and it's also kind of like he is the girlfriend of he's the boyfriend of B. B. The daughter. And he hasn't moved on. It's weird that that happened. And of course it makes him kill people. Yeah. <laughs> but also it's weird that he's like like okay, we've both been grad students mm-hmm. and we've both been asked to do things at grad student level that are demeaning. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, I was asked to teach a 400 person class for no extra money. Yeah. That that's an example of what I was asked to do. You said no. I said no. <laughs> and um, you said hell no, I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and, and yet he's doing stuff at these people's houses. Okay, if you're doing stuff at your advisor's house and it's not social, mm, mm. you've crossed a line there. You yeah. need a, a graduate you don't union. Their, you don't take their dry cleaning. You no. don't do any of that. Um, and yeah, he's been roped into helping with a psychic fair, which has nothing to do with the research that apparently is over anyway. Well, it's filled him full of murderous rage. <laughs> And he's no good at it, okay? Oh, he's also really bad at it. The also, t- it should be stopped right away. <laughs> the ticket booth is off to the side of the front door. Yes. It's not even, like, in the way. You can just walk in. Yes. Which a lot of people do, including the guy who sneaks in yes. behind Jonas. So so we have a picture of this guy. He's he's in... in he sneaks in. He's the guy in the pink shirt in the in the picture that it's up. Uh, it's coming up in just a few minutes. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I'm reading the chat about the beavers. chat about the beavers. Pulling their parachute yep. strings, wearing goggles. Yes. <laughs> Paratrooper. Uh, there he is. Uh, Paratrooper beavers. beavers. Yes. So this guy in the pink shirt. The he's plane a- is also piloted. <laughs> <laughs> he sits on that bench over there behind him until Gerard distracts Jonas and then he hops up and runs inside. Yeah. He totally <laughs> like this is my chance. Yeah. He I'm totally get gets in, in without paying. He gets in without paying. Completely. That was one of our watch like a maniacs. So Tilly's dad, Frank. He's another one of those amazing midsummer farmers who runs a giant farm alone. All by himself. All by himself. Yep. He burns Tilly's journal. Yeah. Now, could her name be bigger on the front of that? <laughs> it's wider than the journal. It's like a 12-year-old girl's journal, like, too. Tilly! <laughs> and big metal letters on the front. Tilly! It's Tilly's journal. Uh, but he says B is the devil. The devil. I mean, our kids have had friends we weren't crazy about, but I've never said one of them was the devil. No. Especially if they had died. Especially if they were the devil, I'd be like, have that devil kid around again. (laughs) (laughs) He could teach me some new licks on the guitar. Yeah, (laughs) maybe he can interpret these sigils for us that we don't understand. (laughs) I did go to high school with a kid from the wrong side of the tracks whose name was Natus. Natus. N A T A S. Well, then there's it a. It was Satan backwards. Yep. His parents named him Natus. There, there, and he lived up to it. There's a hockey player named Marislav Satan, also. It's, it's, Satan. It was cool to see his jersey with Satan written well, yeah, on the back of it. Yeah, everybody wants that one. <laughs> Did you see the giant leaf in Tilly's room? Why does she... Okay, so she has all this eco-friendly stuff, Mm -hmm. and then it's never mentioned at all in the episode that she's super eco-friendly. Well, yeah, she was saving the newts. I I guess. And she was doing that already. She didn't do that for Gerard's benefit. Was she She doing that with the leaf? I I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Do you see what time it is? It is quarter to the hour. You got to put the pedal down (laughs) on these dead people. I know. So let's talk about Simeon's death. Okay, so Simeon 
is upset about his cards. Every time I hear Simeon, I just think of monkeys. Yes. So <laughs> then he takes a banana and goes out into the forest. In his matching waistcoat and bow tie. Yes. And gets hung upside down like a number four. Yes. So that actor, wow, he is upside down. He is yep. legitimately he upside is. down. I looked so closely at every shot of him, and it is never a mannequin. It is that actor whose name is Richard David Kane. Yep. Kudos he, to him. He's obviously on a rig. He's not hung up by his he's ankle. He's not actually hanging nope. by his foot, but nope. he is upside down. And when you see the close-up of his face, you can tell the the veins in his temples are starting to kind of puff up <laughs> because he's been upside down <laughs> for so long. He's having some tough times, yeah. Yeah, so you've got the picture of the full-bodied picture. I, and now I have the... It, now the, the close-up is up there. Yes, the clip-on bow tie. You're so right. <laughs> like, if you're going to go to that length of fancy waistcoat and bow tie, you should at least know how to tie a bow tie. You should. So I looked into how long you can actually hang upside down before you die. Because, of course, you know, our bodies function with the benefit of gravity, right? Your lungs yeah. need gravity and yeah. your circulatory Everything system certainly needs, needs gravity. Everything needs gravity to work. And it's, it, it seems like there's a super wide range of tolerance. But after about 15 minutes, most people will start to run into some problems, right? Um, eventually, you will go blind. Though, when you get tipped back up again, it could your vision could come back. Okay. Or not. Or not. The, cap, the, the vessels in your eyes are so sensitive. Yeah. Um, but in... In 97, there were a group of Belgians on a roller coaster that stopped at the top of a loop upside down. Okay, so they're on a roller coaster. It stops. And they are stuck upside down for 90 minutes. Oh, my gosh. And none of them died. I, I can't own, like, the first, like, first two or three minutes, you have silence. And then you have the nervous laughter. And then you have panic set oh, in. No. It yeah. would be screaming from the first second. As soon as it stopped, it's just screaming. So uh, they interviewed one of the ladies who was on it, and she said the long-term effects for her was she had massive bruises on her shoulders from resting on the harness that held them into the oh, seats. Yeah. Because they were just hung upside down, so all of her weight was on it. And David Blaine, the magician was once upside down for 60 hours. Okay. Was he actually, or was it? Yeah. Okay. Because he does like physical. He does feats. those weird physical things. Yeah. 60 hours. Yeah. That's the insane. only time that he wasn't upside down was if he had to go to the bathroom and he got to eat. But that was like a total of like 10 minutes at a time. No, thank you. I don't even like touching my toes. I get a little yeah. dizzy if I have to like stand up too fast. <laughs> Never mind, hang upside down. But I, I'm super impressed with that actor for hanging upside down for so long. Yeah, he totally does a good job. So then um, Gerard is confronted by, by, Ginger, by Ginger. And her vengeance, vengeance and rage. And I like how in this episode, they go out of their way to prove all the psychics are false. Yes. As well as open leaving the door open but now, they're not all bad no like hattie's not. not bad no she hattie is trying to help yeah at the end of the episode the way she knows how yeah. and i think she does help yeah i think she does too um and and what she's doing having isaac look into people and gather information yeah. That's something that fake psychics actually do. Absolutely do. Right? Yep. Uh, in the old times, in the early days of spiritualism, uh, really successful spiritualists used to send scouts to a town before they came there to, like, scope it out, hang out in the pub, you know, go to the tea room, take notes on everybody, talk to people, get the gossip. And, <clears throat> sorry. And they would gather all that information well before the actual psychic showed up. Oh, and this is... This is totally a an idea or a, a problem that is close to my heart. I've talked about uh, spiritualist photographers in the past, mm -hmm. and the the comic that I write, the second episode, uh, the second issue of that comic is all about a fake psychic. Yeah, but they're not all bad people. 
They're not no, bad Gerard people. Gerard is awful. Yes, Gerard is awful. And Ginger lays it down. Oh, she does. I love it when she goes, did he tell you that you, you were Cleopatra? Yeah. And she's like, y- yeah, yeah. yes. Have you already given him money? Yeah. I'm really glad that Jeannie just believes her. Yeah. That she, Gerard's like, oh, don't listen to her. She's blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no, I'm out of here. Bye. Yeah. I'm gone. Absolutely. And and Peter doesn't lord it over her. No, She's not like, at all. Aren't you mad at me? He's like, no, 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 I'm not mad. It's okay. Those things happen. People get taken advantage of, especially in grief. Yeah, but man, Ginger's angry. Oh, she man. should run him down with the bookmobile. <laughs> <laughs> so you think she puts the rat on the car? Yeah. Okay. Don't you? Yeah. She she also keys his car too. <laughs> yeah, she does. So, I don't know if it's a key. It's something, but she just. Down yep. the side of his car. Absolutely. Like, no concern at all. Why does winter smell like peppermint after the ladies throw bilge water on him? I don't know. And shouldn't he smell something else? Like bilge water? Or wintergreen? Like- <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Aha. No, because his grandpa ate peppermint. Yes. So he smells like peppermint. No, it's Fleur's back pocket. Yeah, it's really weird what the whole smell thing. Yeah. And it's kind of it's kind of mean to grandpa. Why? Well, it's your grandpa smelled. <laughs> well, no, he always had a peppermint. Yeah, I guess. So, the secret society, the spirits of the damned club or whatever they're called. Which which is my favorite part of the episode because I want to go hang out with those ladies because they obviously are, like, that is a very positive, affirming uh, mental health reaction to a male-dominated world. Well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a way to cope with they it. They get together, they do this activity that's ritualistic, it helps but, them feel but doesn't hurt anybody. No. And then they go home and get drunk. But they could just, you know, stand up like Ginger does. Yes. But maybe it's the club that gives her the confidence to confront Gerard. I think so. Um, but if you're going to have a secret clandestine group where you wear black hoods, you put your black cloak in like a duffel. Yeah. In a bag, in a tote. No, you walk around the village in your big black coat. You're supposed to carry it to the site, and then you put it on, not twinkle through the village in pairs already in your cloaks. That kind of gives it away. (laughs) I love how winter is like, there's chanting in cloaks. I I can't go in by myself. (laughs) Well, would you? I need backup. (laughs) I mean... The last time they saw something like that, somebody wound up dead on a big stone in the middle of a circle. That's true. I mean, I would be careful, too, if I were him. Yes, we have eight minutes. I know. I know. Um, So we find out that Peter has plagiarized his science, right? So he's a fake. Um, The the undercurrent theme of this whole episode is people who are fake. Yeah. And sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's not. Right. And sometimes it's for good reasons and sometimes it's not. But Peter, as a, as a researcher who got a lot of credit for what he did, the fact that he was stealing it all from a Romanian scientist who he was paying off, yes, that's pretty low. That tells you something about his character, I think. Think Latterly doesn't want uh, their ritual cloak to get wrinkled in the gym bag. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Maybe you could have one that's reversible. Maybe. I saw a postman in a poncho the other day. Have you ever seen a postal poncho? No. It was like an official poncho. Official. Okay, we have seven <laughs> minutes left and I we're know, talking about but it was like, post office ponchos. No, it was the post office Tweety Blue fabric oh. and had the little ribbon around the bottom like they have on the bottom of their I shorts. I just want their little electric car. And he had his bag underneath it. Oh, it was nice. raining. He was wearing a poncho. Nice. It was awesome. Maybe you could have a reversible cloak. Yes. So the inside could be like, Burberry fabric, you know, the plaid. And then when you get to the ritual, you take it off and flip it around. I also like in this episode to get us towards the end of this episode is (laughs) I like how a ritual cloak would be so expensive, by the way, it would be like $12,000 or something. (laughs) 
I like how <laughs> Fleur is taken hostage and then saves herself. Oh, yeah. She's having none of that. Yeah. Well, and what does Jonas have in his hand? He has a star. He has a little plastic star. It's metal, and it's pointy. I don't think it's metal. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, but I don't think it is. I think it's about as dangerous as the the uh, it's Chris- Skeletor one. It's a Christmas ornament. Yeah. Who knows? It, it is a Christmas ornament. But it is pointy. But, but, you know, if you hold it with two points up, it's the devil. It's the devil. Yes. Somebody was suggested a Midsummer Mania expo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he's got it to her throat, and it does look pointy. Pointy, but no. If it's metal and it's sharp. It's not metal. <laughs> it doesn't look metal. It's supposed to be. I think probably they had to do two or three takes of that because he accidentally bumped it into her neck and it bent over. <laughs> but you're right. She's not having it, and when she has the no. first opportunity to get loose from him, oh, she, she does. She saves herself. Yeah. Yep. She does. And I like that it's Winter doing the talking here. Mm-hmm. It's not always Barnaby it's to the rescue. It's not always Barnaby to the talk rescue. Yeah. Stop or we'll say Satan again. <laughs> so Hattie channels B to talk to Jonas, mm-hmm. right? Because... He's killed Tilly because she told him she had a dream about B. What? I know. And then uh, he killed Simeon because Simeon knew about the dream and said he'd seen something in the cards what? about B. And Jonas just can't be having people talking about his dead girlfriend. No. It's upsetting, Mark. It's upsetting. So they have to die. They have to die. He needs some therapy. He needs some grief counseling. We need a better help discount code for Jonas. Yes. Um... But then Hattie is like, B wouldn't want you to do this. She wouldn't be happy with this, right? Which, if, if it's true or not, she's doing the right thing. Now. Yes, even if she's faking it. But she says, stop, Bubza, stop. Bubza. That's their term of endearment? And, okay. B called him Bubza? I know people have different terms of endearment, but usually anybody who's friends with them knows. You would hear her call him that yeah right um but bubsa to me sounds like brother yeah like my, yo bubsa well my kids so the triplets they used to call xander bubby yeah their brother bubby yes um the girls did <clears throat> so i looked up bubsa i can't find any reference to bubsa as not. a term for endearment yes there is a guy on twitch who's really popular playing video games whose name is bubsa okay so what does he have subscribers that you can give to us? What would Hattie have to say for you to think she actually was channeling me? Well, that would prove it was me. It's not, not that we else. have uh, specific names for each other, but we have things that we understand that no one else understands, mm-hmm. like miniature armpit Napoleon. Yes, which is on my wallet. It's on your wallet because it's a joke between us yeah. that neither of us remembers where we where it got started. No, we don't remember. But where. you, but now that wouldn't work, right? Because anybody who's ever seen your wallet would know that that's something that you and I. Yeah. Know. So maybe maybe if Hattie said, "Hey, maniacs," <laughs> I'd be like, "Mark, it's you." Oh my gosh! If somebody actually. I'm I'm just waiting for the moment where somebody says maniac on the show and turns to the camera and goes, maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so awesome if Barnaby just broke the wall and said, hey, Because maniacs. absolutely, like, again, this week we got liked uh, by a couple of cast members on, yes. on messages that we put out. So. And maybe they know nothing. Maybe they're just clicking a button or their PA is clicking a button. But I have a feeling at least some people know that there's a show. People, people seem to like my podcast. sparkle hair on uh, the last reel I put out with my big eyelashes. You're so pretty. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, so. so they take Jonas down. The end. Yes. Best <laughs> corpse. It's got to be Simeon. He's upside down. Yes, he's absolutely upside down. For forever. It has to be. He strikes the pose perfectly. I wonder if they had other tarot cards that could have been his logo, and they were like, 
Okay, Richard David Kane, which of the poses can you do off these tarot cards? You, oh, you do that one really well. Can you yeah. do it upside down? No. Okay, that's the one we're going to use for your logo. Or maybe they chose the logo first and they auditioned actors and made them hang upside down. I guess. me. <laughs> can you strike this pose? The role is yours. After okay. the credits. After the credits. Everybody is just damaged in this episode, especially the beavers. <laughs> Poor beaver. That's going to be one lonely, angry beaver. Yep. Just hanging out with newts. Yeah. I think. I hope he floods their house even more. I, I hope. No. I, I hope he eats the owl. I like them. I don't like Gerard. Nah. Gerard. Well, no. Gerard's bad. Yeah. Gerard's going to go to jail at some point I because th- he's definitely embez- you know stole some money yeah. from people and misled them. And Yeah. Do you think Peter and Jeannie are going to be okay? I hope so. You think Isaac is going to be okay? Uh, Maybe the three of them will talk a little bit now. That would be nice. Maybe. Ginger has got it going on. Yeah. She's going to be fine. She's going to be driving the bookmobile with attitude. Yeah. From now on. Ginger's going to find a new partner of whatever type she prefers. Yep. And enjoy life. And I think Hattie's going to be okay. Yep. She might give up the <laughs> give up the psychic gig. Yes. Who else do we care about? I think Frank Mulroney's just going to keep on running his farm. Yeah. I think he was kind of a gristly old guy Angry old man already. It's sad that he's alone now. Yeah. He's an old fool. Yeah. He's heartbroken. Yes. And Sally Ann and Rachel will keep making their podcast. I hope so. I'm sure they'll make an episode about the murders. Yeah. And probably get some press for it. Yeah. All right. So that is The Witches of Angels Rise. Okay, so before we do our official announcement, would you like me to go get Olive? Yeah, so let's let's take a few minutes that you can go grab Olive, and I I will uh, uh, keep the troops entertained, and we'll give people a few minutes to get here who have wanted to skip the the part of uh, the podcast that's spoilers only. I should actually look at you. I keep looking at Sarah, but I should be looking right at you. Um, so I just want to start this whole discussion of mystery maniacs with how much we absolutely love and thank you guys. Um, we're three years into this podcast. It is a fun thing that we decided to do on a, a couple of afternoons that has turned into a situation where we're raising hundreds of dollars for charity, a situation where we're building community and a situation where we found a community of people who loved a show that we loved. And I know you've all been in this situation. There's two types of this situation. The first type is when you say, I love Midsummer Murders and um, they say, I've never heard of it. And then you get to introduce them into the show. And now here's Olive. So Olive's going to steal the show in a second. Um, and then, then, the, then there's the second type of people who you, you say, oh, I really love Midsummer Murders. And they say, I do too. And when they do that, you are, you know, you form a connection. You can start talking about your favorite uh, episodes. Yes, Olive has in fact grown. Oh, did you wake her up? I did. Oh, she is CP. She usually sleeps in the afternoons now. I told her that her present was requested. So part of that is is that thank you to all of you for, for doing that, for talking about the show, for spreading the word about the show. I saw earlier that somebody had mentioned uh, the podcast to some of their friends and that we're going to get some new listeners. We're always getting new listeners. Um, and I really am overwhelmed constantly by all the positive comments that we get. You're so tired. She's behind the mic. Yeah, she's a little behind the mic. If you move the mic, there you go. There we can see all of <laughs> So she's got her Yoda ears on. They're not very perky because she's so tired. She's sleepy. So you've 
been napping. That she has a very upmarket collar. Someone says <laughs> it has it has rainbows and unicorns <laughs> on her collar. So she's so calm. Yeah, you want to see her about seven o'clock tonight when she's bouncing around <laughs> the living room. She gets a little crazy sometimes, don't ya? Oh, you're waking up a little bit now. <laughs> <laughs> she is a good pupper. You're a good baby. Could you <laughs> yawn some more? <laughs> Are we keeping you up, Olive? No. <laughs> okay, so if you step away yep. and uh, return Olive to her bed. Her, Olive back to her bed, uh, I can talk about what's going to happen. So what what we're going to do for the next hour is first of all talk about. Uh, the switch. Yep, oh, there's more olive. And then we're gonna talk. We're gonna play the trailer. Uh, that has audio and video because we're doing reels and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then when we're done with the trailer, we're gonna give you exact information about specific episodes that we'll be covering and the dates that we'll be covering those episodes so that you can begin to spread the word. What we're hoping, of course, is that we increase our audience and that we get people who are like, oh, I don't like Midsummer, but I like this other show. Maybe you listen to that. And then maybe they'd listen to other episodes and things like that. Um, and we're trying to get a wide variety of shows so that we can expand that audience and maybe include some people that aren't Midsummer fans, but might become Midsummer fans, and that hopefully are Maniac fans. And Maniacs like us, absolutely. Um, and that's what we want to do uh, with that. So once Sarah steps back in here, we will talk about uh, the Mystery Maniacs. And the first thing that we want to talk about with the Mystery Maniacs is our new logo. So this is the new logo, what it looks like, the Mystery Maniacs podcast. This is designed by Sarah. No, you're not on camera now. <laughs> I have yet. the logo up. So. so tell us about the design of the logo. Oh, I just wanted something fun. I wanted something that... Um evoked shows where British people get killed, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the rule, right? Um, and uh, that might look good on a T-shirt. So we've got, it's a yes. teacup. Yes. It's a bloody teacup with a midsummer, with a m mystery maniacs teabag. How, how often are we going to miss say that and say midsummer maniacs when we mean mystery maniacs? We're going we're gonna to make mistakes, but, you know, like pronouns, I'm sure everybody's going to accept what we say and understand that sometimes you make mistakes. The, the mystery maniacs. So we'll have some T-shirts and stuff up soon with the new logo. If you're interested in those, give us a week or so. And yeah, we'll up. definitely have some merch we'll coming. Some, we'll post when they're up. Yep. Um, and, oh, we have to... Are we going to watch the trailer? Yes. So the next thing I want to do is show the trailer. Now, I'm pretty sure you're going to hear audio and see video, okay? <laughs> so if you don't, we'll try to figure something out. But this trailer is going to drop tomorrow for the real world, okay? You're seeing so it 24 hours before everybody you're else. You're getting it before anybody else, Okay. <laughs> And the information that comes after the trailer, you're getting before the newsletter. You get it from the live episode. Then it's going out in the newsletter on Wednesday. And then it'll go out into the real world. By the way, we haven't talked about this. This is the world's busiest month. <laughs> Show us the trailer. Okay. Here we go with the world premiere of the trailer. Are you a fan of British Mystery TV? You know what we mean. Have you ever binged a season of Poirot? Are you a junkie for Masterpiece on PBS? Have you ever watched a quaint show set in an idyllic British countryside and thought, this is good, but it would be even better if they found a body? If you like your murder with less gore and more cream teas, 
you'll love the Mystery Maniacs podcast. For years, we've been the Midsummer Maniacs. But well, after over 130 episodes, we've run out of Midsummer Murders. So we're branching out. Yep, we'll be dipping into all your favorite village fate, snobbery, landowner, tweed-wearing, monocled British mysteries. Join us for forays into Poirot, Father Brown, Jonathan Creek, and lots more. The first episode of Mystery Maniacs drops August 15th on all your favorite podcast platforms. Just look for Mystery Maniacs. See See you there, there, maniacs. Maniacs. Okay, so hopefully you guys heard less gore and more creatine. So they heard it and they saw it. Okay, yes. So uh, that is the trailer. And now we are Mystery Maniacs. So uh, yes, to answer your question, and please feel free if you have questions. So this will be coming out on the same uh, Monday release schedule. Same Monday release schedule. On all the same accounts. And all the same accounts. So what we're going to do is change the name on the account as much as possible. So if you follow us on Spotify or Stitcher or YouTube, you'll see the name change, but the account will stay the same. So yeah. you won't so have to So all your subscriptions and everything will be there. Yeah. Right? Uh, Got to put that logo on a mug. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. going to do that. <laughs> um, so... That is a couple of things I want to talk about is what's going to change and what's not going to change. And really, we tried to make it as as easy for you guys as possible, right? So just to to begin, a couple of things. Exact same schedule. Every Monday, 9 a.m., same schedule. We're getting the same, uh, same, roughly the same length of episode. We'll still have Best Corpse. We might. Uh, it will still have best corpse. We'll still have bad movies. We'll still have all that stuff, but we will ha- have more possibly as we go through. Yeah. Really what we're trying to do is build the audience and build the knowledge of mystery maniacs for the next couple of months. Then we'll begin adding on more, uh, fun stuff, more, more fun features. stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the same feed, you don't have to change your feed. You don't have to change your subscriptions though. If you would like to subscribe to the YouTube, to channel. The YouTube channel, it would be <laughs> so awesome. We can get sauce. <laughs> um, but there will be new socials for all of those things. And I'm going to put the new socials into the chat right now. And so you the, mean like a new Twitter account, there's new a, Instagram account. And we are going to double post. Yeah. So right. If you follow so us now. You follow us now. It's great. But we're this is what we're going to tell the new people. Yeah. What to to follow, right? And these new socials are are going to have the exact same material. You'll you'll just you may actually double up on the material, but we think that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one thing that we have not had before is we now have a Facebook page Mm -hmm. for the podcast. Okay. Because before we were, we participated on the Midsummer page and on the Acorn page. And it just didn't make sense for us to have our own. But now for Mystery Maniacs, we'll have our very own Facebook page. So we'll have a place where we can hang out. We'll we'll still post those other places when it it makes sense. Um, And we will certainly release um, new Midsummer Maniacs episodes when they come out in the same feeds. So you won't, have to juggle a bunch of stuff. You won't miss anything. So what we would like you to do is to go to the Twitter and the Instagram and the Facebook page and and like and subscribe to all those too so that when we get new fans, because there's a bunch of new Facebook groups that we're going to start posting to, when they go to the page and they go to uh, the Instagram and they see that we have all these fans already, they're more likely to join, right? Yeah. So that's and the what... more people, the more fun we will have. Yes. And by the way, we still have no intention of monetizing anything. No. You we're... will not hear ads on the new no. show. No new... No sponsors, <laughs> none of that. We're not, we're, we're not going to do that. So when yeah. we talk about more people, we just mean more awesome people. We just want more... We. We want more community. Yeah. That's what we want. Yeah. So I posted the Instagram, the Facebook, and the Twitter on 
the chat. On the chat. So now let's get to the nitty gritty. People want to know. People want to know. What are we going to cover? What are we going to do? So the first episode drops on the 15th. Uh-huh. And we talked about who did we see in the trailer. We saw Poirot in the trailer. Father Brown. Father Brown. And we saw Jonathan Creek. Yeah. So we will be starting with the granddaddy of them all. On the 15th of August, we will be covering Poirot, Episode 1, Season 1, The Adventure of the Clapham Cook. She would have wanted her things. She would have wanted her things. (laughs) White sleevers. (laughs) So, for example, a couple of things that are new that we're going to to do with this is um, over my travels in the next little while, because I will be traveling, uh, I'm going to listen to the stories for all three of these Poirot episodes. Yeah. So I'll be able to talk about the actual uh, stories as well as the episodes. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking David Suchet here. We're yes. not talking to anybody else right now. And the, the format is going to be, we're going to cover three uh, three episodes from a season, a month, and then we're going to have a mini episode that's going to talk about, like we might talk about the new Poirot movies yeah. in that mini episode. We haven't 100% figured out, but it'll be Poirot related, but it won't be episode related. So that if you're just interested in Poirot, the books or something like that, you may still tune in. And we're going to, when we jump into a show like this, we're going to do a few episodes from a single season, but we're not going to cover every season in a row. We're not going to be Poirot maniacs for the next year or anything like that. No. We're going to, we're going to choose a few episodes from one season um, and dig deep into those for an episode uh, and make fun of them because even though David Suchet is Poirot. Yep. There's still lots to make fun of there. I mean, there's Hastings. I mean, that, that's yeah. enough all by himself is Hastings. August 22nd, we're going to cover uh, Triangle at Rhodes, which has my favorite minor character in it. Yeah. The lady with the red gloves. Yep. Yeah. And then episode uh, on August 29th, we'll be covering The Problem at Sea, mm. which Hastings is just fan. Fantastic. Is that, that? Do you remember my hospital? Is that no, problem at sea? No, I no, think that's, pr- that's on problem there. at sea is the the one where Hastings is doing the. Uh, it's the one with the puppet. Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, oh, it is. That's the same one. It's the yes. same one. Yes, yes. the puppet. He's, he's having the the skeet shooting competition. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so as you can tell, we've seen these quite a few times. Yes. Um, so we also kept in mind, as we decided what to cover first, we tried to choose things that we thought a lot of people would have access to. Yes. So Poirot, for example, is available on most of the demand services, but it's also available on demand through most public library services. Yes. So if you have a library card, check with your library to see if they have them on demand. Like we can stream Poirot from our local library with just yeah. a library card on Hoopla. And is that's, service that that's we have, one of the, the things why we ask people. Yeah, we wanted to make uh, sure served. everybody could watch. And you'll still put out a reminder message, right? I'll still put out a reminder. To, and a reminder watch. reel with some weird yeah. thing on it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you forget what we're going to cover, like what episode of Poirot you should watch before Monday's podcast release, we'll still put out a reminder. Okay, so August is Poirot. What's September? September will be Father Brown Season 1, the new BBC Father Brown that's only a few years old. September 12th, we'll be covering Hammer of God, which is the first episode of both series, of both versions of Father Mm -hmm. Brown. Mm -hmm. Uh, Eye of Apollo, which is in both series also. And uh, on the 19th and then September 26th, we'll be covering Bride of Christ. Yes. So again, Bride of Christ, the first appearance of... Sister Boniface. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So again, what we did was we chose our three favorite episodes from the from one season of the show, and that's what we're going to dig into. Yes. And Dan- then the fourth episode will be um, a little side venture, and this time we're going to talk about the original Father Brown series to compare it to the new ones. Oh my gosh! If you watch the originals now, not only yep. is it potato vision because of the the video quality. Yep. But it's weird. It's, it's just, super strange. It's very weird. I got to agree with Danielle here in the chat about uh, pink gin. I think I might have a sip of pink gin while we're doing uh, Triangle of Roads. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So then. And we th- may come back later to these shows, you know, next and year. Do, 
and yeah. choose some things from season yeah. two, yes. right? So we'll have some variety. Then we have October. Spooky. So in October, we will be covering Halloween mysteries. Yes. We will cover the Poirot Halloween episode, which is fantastic. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, because Ariadne's in it. Yep. And that girl drowns in an apple dunking bucket. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then second of all, uh, we will cover the Father Brown Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there are... Last year or the year before, Mr. James. Oh, uh, for the last few years, yeah, Mark Gaddis has, has released done. an Mr. James um, uh, mini movie on TV, and they're actually put out at Christmas. Yeah, but in, because in the UK, Christmas is the time for spooky stories. Spooky stories. Um, but we will we'll choose one or two of those, and uh, we'll let you know which ones in case you want to read them or watch them in advance. Um, but we're going to do kind of a theme there. Yes, Mock Steffler, I will be posting upcoming episode reminders so you yes. don't have to put this all on your calendar. No. The fact that I have it all on my calendar is kind of nice that I, I remember so much of it. Yeah. We'll be sure that you know. So that episode may also be live mm-hmm. because, as you know, we kind of do the Halloween. <laughs> So, uh, do we get to dress up as our favorite MR James character? We may, in fact, dress up. So that I, would just I think, be an old dude in and, tweeds. And I also think <laughs> we should film uh, our Halloween display that we do every year. Maybe oh, yeah. do a little introduction to our Halloween display because we yeah. do a handmade uh, custom yard Halloween, extravaganza. Yard extravaganza every year Maybe for we Halloween. We should do a Facebook Live or something. Walk around. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that with the Facebook page that we will be able to do YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Oh, you're so fancy. You think I knew something about the social media. Okay, tell us about November. Okay, November will be Jonathan Creek. November 14th, we're going to do Wrestler's Tomb. If you notice very closely, we took two weeks off there after Halloween <laughs> because we have to it's kind of busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 20, uh, on the t- November 21st, we'll be covering No Trace of Tracy and then episode five of, uh, Jonathan Creek, November 28th, The House of Monkeys. Uh, yes, Danielle, it'll all be in the newsletter. Yep. And we'll also put it on the Facebook page and everywhere else. You'll see the schedule. Yeah. We'll, we'll make sure that everybody can access that anywhere. Um, Oh, I, I like what Think Laterally says. The Mr. James character is a lump in the bed. Yeah, that's so scary. That's so. Anyway, yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know if as many people are familiar with Jonathan Creek. But again, it's a it's a it's an older show. It's, yep. it's totally accessible. You can find it all kinds of places. It stars Alan Davies. They're all locked room mysteries. And Carolyn Quinlan. These <laughs> yeah, episodes. Yeah, and um, oh, they're just really fun. So they're if you've fun never seen it, you're puzzles love it. and yeah. yeah, you're really gonna like it. Then in December, I didn't make a slide for this, but in December, we will be covering Christmas episodes, including the Mystery Maniacs Christmas song. Which, we'll, who we'll, knows what it will include this year. Yeah. It's not just going to be Midsummer. Who knows? And I got to tell you, I've been taking singing lessons. You have been. So, so guess what? You're going to have to sing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll write it, but you can sing it. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a little drummer boy or something like that. Yeah, a little Poirot boy. A little Poirot. <laughs> so that's the schedule from now until the end of November. Yep. You're seeing it here first. We hope all this makes you happy. It makes us really happy. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. And again, all the things that you love about Midsummer Maniacs are not going away. We're just going to be talking about different shows. Um, and if you have other recommendations or if you have like season one um recommendations from other shows that your favorite episode i know a lot of folks were talking about maybe murdoch we could certainly do that what we tried to do was choose um mystery shows that are british or british ish right that are not gory that are light we don't we don't want to do any no. noir or heavy we're not you know, doing happy valley no, or whatever that show is called serial killer yep. shows we also wanted to do things that were accessible that a lot of people could get their hands on but we also wanted to choose shows that were not, um, that didn't have like like serial arcs of stories, right? Yes. So if you do. only watch three episodes of a, of a season, you can follow along, you know what's happening. Yeah. If those are the only ones you've ever seen, you're not going to be lost. Yeah. 
So those are the criteria. So if you have other shows that you want to recommend to us, by all means, you know, drop us an email, send us a tweet, Instagram post, whatever. Um, we the, the broken wood brigade has already yes, spoken. Yes, and and I think it it definitely qualifies, right? Yeah. It doesn't have a big story or no. that you have to understand. You can just dip into. It I would think episode. in our second sort of quarter that broken wood or Murdoch would oh, might yeah. make an appearance. Yeah. So we well, I love that. Murdoch. It's so fun. Getty Lee showing up in this. Uh, so a couple of things. First of all, there's been a lot of questions in the chat about is where this is available. Mm -hmm. In the newsletter for that month, I will be telling you where it's available. A month in advance. A you'll month know. in advance, you'll know. This show is on this on this uh, platform, or you can get it here on YouTube, yeah. or you can get it in different places, right? Because we want you to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. Second of all, the second thing I need from all of you now, and, and you need to repeat after me. <laughs> when I go to post in all these other news, new groups, if you're in those new groups, you need to be like, oh, that show's awesome. I can't wait till they cover Poirot. I cannot wait to listen to this episode of the podcast that I already like. <laughs> So we need you to go out and say, we're awesome. Of course, if you think we are. Yeah, right. if you don't, that's fine. What are you doing here, though? Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, if you want to encourage other folks to listen, that would be great. Yeah, that that's what we're hoping for. Um, and and push them towards the, the Facebook group because the Facebook group is going to be our prime way to talk to you guys, mm -hmm. right? Um the people who are already subscribed and liked and all that stuff. Yeah. The other groups are for us to find new people to draw into our cult of maniacness. Yes. There are so, definitely, if nothing else, there are Agatha Christie junkies out there. Yes. I think, who I think, will. uh, well, there's, there I is a, know. there is a Poirot and... Facebook group that has 64,000 people in it. They might not like us making fun of Poirot. <laughs> I we do it with love, but who knows? <laughs> I am going to. I I'm first of all going to talk to all the the admins admins the of these yeah. groups about posting in them because we don't want to we don't want to make any sort of waves oh, or anything no, like that. No. And we've had we have very good relationships with the Acorn people, the Midsummer, and the three Midsummer groups. Mm -hmm. We have very good. Re relationships with them we don't make they them all yet. absolutely uh are <laughs> cult of maniacs cult i like of, that yeah <laughs> do i have to rejoin facebook for this no you no, don't of we're still not. on twitter still on instagram still on youtube i i have it figured out that uh, i can post all those things rather quickly and there will always be the the website where the episodes are posted where you can put and, it in the show notes and, and all that Spotify so, yeah. and all so that. So it'll be super easy to see. Yeah, and I'll be posting the show notes on that Facebook group yeah. too so yeah. that, that you see all that stuff and don't have to go to anywhere else. Okay, we've given you a ton of information. First of all, do you have questions about Mystery Maniacs? If Other you, than, are you going to cover this? Because we'll <laughs> get there. We have We that. don't want anybody to be confused. Yeah. And yeah. whenever Midsummer episodes release, we're on it. Yes, so... If new Midsummers are released, they supersede any of schedule here. Yeah. Right? They you want to go back to the regular video they feed would, now? Yes, we should go back to the video feed. Yeah. They would take precedence over everything. And then we welcome all the Midsummer, all the people who have been Perot and all the other places back into Midsummer. Yeah. 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 So, so. so if you have any questions or any confusion, you know how to reach us. Just let us know. We don't want to yep. lose anybody. No. Um, so on August 15th, those first, that first mystery so you're gonna maniac start, will drop. So you're going to start noticing changes in all the feeds and all the Instagrams and all that in stuff. In the next week. In the next week or so as I change the name on all of them and change yeah. the logo and stuff like that. But same accounts. Same accounts. Mm -hmm. You just may have a couple extra ones to follow. That's all. <laughs> So, what, do we have questions? Feels like good homework. Will we change the name back 
when we do no, mid- but so- we'll make sure that it's in the show name, the episode yeah. name, that it's Midsummer. Yeah. So, so you'll definitely be the able new to tell. names of the episodes will have the name of the series first. Yeah. So it'll be like Poirot. Blah, 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 yeah. Blah. yeah. And the numbering will continue from Midsummer. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get off on numbering in a weird way. But that's okay. Yeah. But you'll be able to tell from the name of the episode what we're talking about. So when it's midsummer, it'll be there. We will be still maintaining the subreddit for Midsummer Murders. Yeah. You always do that. Um, we'll make an announcement in there about this change. And I've joined a couple of new uh, groups on Reddit. And we'll be posting in there, but again, it's always additive. Nothing Are you going to make a Mystery Maniac subreddit? I think we should make a Mystery Maniac subreddit. Yeah. I don't the, think it would be very busy, but it'd be good to have. It would be good to have if you had specific questions. Mm-hmm. So, But again, you don't have to be on any of those platforms yes. to be able to, to know what's going on. Not a requirement. We are really stoked. This has been a lot of back. We've been going back and forth on this oh for almost gosh. two years yeah. about yep. how what we were going to do when we, we were out so of excited about the change. So we we hope that you're excited too. We're still going to have lots of fun. We hope you'll come along with us. Yep. And if you're not interested in those shows, pay attention to the feed. And when Midsummer comes back, join us for another Midsummer. I I, I implore you all to come along. Those are all great shows. You'll enjoy them. Um, and also, I think this is a, a chance for us to broaden our audience and and meet new people who are excited about new shows. Well, and engage with existing people about yep. more things. Yes. So that's always fun. All right. I think that's everything. <laughs> if I randomly... if. I randomly traveling to Bloomington for fill in blank college <laughs> sporting event. I'm contacting you. <laughs> so th- that's been a question uh, that has been brought up for us to do a physical meetup. Yeah. The problem is that 65% of our audience is um, American and America is a big country. Yeah. And so for us to do a meetup would mean that people would have to travel quite a bit, quite far. I wish there was an event like a, a mystery convention that a lot of people were already going to be at. And, and if there is an event like there. that yeah. that you could suggest, we would definitely do oh, that. Oh, yeah, let us know. If I manage to convince my wife to get in a plane and go to England, we will certainly be doing an event there. Yeah, we'll do something. Yeah. But th- it's definitely in the future. because I Because I do think we'll have... Um, a broader audience for Mystery Maniacs. Yes. So, but because there's just more to be interested in because we're doing more shows. So. We would love to do live shows and things like that, but it's just everything is so spread out in America. It's difficult to do unless you're getting millions of downloads every day. So, Nocturnal Druid, I'm glad that we bring you joy. You bring us uh, joy. Absolutely. You've been sure. there from the beginning, man. And yeah. uh, we we have, that's that's one thing that I really like is that we have had people from the beginning liking and subscribing and talking to us and they're still around, Mm -hmm. you know, they, I'm not nearly as active on the social platforms as you are, but know that when, if you post to us, if you're emailing or just commenting on stuff, I see all of it. Mark just curates it. He, he, he holds that responsibility for the team. He does it and he's really good at it. Um, but it's yeah, it's just been fantastic. I don't want to drag this t- too much on, but no. And we we've said it before. We love you guys. We wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for you. And it's so fun. We just have fun every single time. Yep. So, um, we hope that you're looking forward to the new episodes like we are. And so so we're going to do a two week break. Yep. August fifteenth, we will return as Mystery yep. Maniacs covering the Clapham Cook. Yes. Uh, with Poirot, 32 times, no. there will be more information <laughs> in the uh, mi- uh, in the newsletter. The next two weeks are crazy town. But you'll see some some posts from us in various yep. places to yep. remind you about the episode coming out. Really, this first week, we're just going to alert you guys of the stuff. Mm-hmm. And then next week is really when we're going to start the promotion because it's hard to do 
promotion because it's like, come listen to our podcast that we haven't started yet, but yeah. we kind of have. That we haven't released yet. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so we will see, um, kind of see you in two weeks. Yes. Um, we hope you're excited. We'll de- excited. We'll, we'll continue doing live episodes. And I, like I said, I think we'll be able to stream on multiple platforms yeah. in the future, which would be fantastic. Thanks for coming today. Thank you all so much. We love you guys. And uh, thank you for coming today. Yeah. You guys are awesome. All right. Until the 15th. Bye, Bye, Maniacs. Maniacs.